The deep ocean, the vast and dark expanse that covers most of our planet, is a world of profound scarcity. In the sunlit surface waters, life is abundant, powered by a constant supply of energy from the sun. But in the abyss, thousands of meters below, there is no sunlight to fuel photosynthesis. The environment is one of crushing pressure, near freezing temperatures, and an eternal starlit night. For the creatures that live here, life is a constant struggle for sustenance, a patient wait for the sparse, slow motion rain of organic matter from the world above, known as marine snow. But occasionally, this gentle rain is punctuated by a truly monumental event. When one of the great whales of the ocean dies, its colossal body, a massive repository of organic matter, begins its final, solemn journey to the seafloor. This is the beginning of a whale fall. It is not an end, but a spectacular beginning. The arrival of a whale carcass on the desolate, muddy plains of the abyssal floor is the single largest pulse of food and energy that the deep sea ever receives. It is an instant, explosive oasis, and it triggers a dramatic and complex ecological succession, creating a unique, temporary ecosystem that can support a bizarre and fascinating array of deep-sea creatures for up to a century. The story of a whale fall unfolds in a series of distinct, overlapping stages, each with its own unique cast of characters. The first is the mobile scavenger stage, the arrival of a multi-ton carcass on the food-starved seafloor is a dinner bell that rings for miles around. The first to arrive are the deep sea's cleanup crew, the highly mobile scavengers who are adapted to finding and consuming large food falls. Leading the charge are the hagfish, primitive eel-like creatures that are often called slime eels. They are masters of consumption, burrowing into the carcass and eating it from the inside out their rasping, tooth-like structures on their tongue tearing away at the flesh. Joining them are the formidable sleeper sharks, such as the Greenland shark or the Pacific sleeper shark. These ancient, slow-moving predators are the apex scavengers of the abyss, their powerful jaws capable of tearing huge chunks of blubber from the whale. Hordes of other, smaller scavengers, like deep-sea crabs, amphipods, and shrimp, swarm over the carcass, creating a scene of frenzied feasting. This stage is a brief and violent affair. Depending on the size of the whale and the number of scavengers, the vast majority of the whale's soft tissue can be stripped away in a matter of months, or at most, a few years. What is left is a skeleton, picked mostly clean, and a surrounding area of sea floor that has been heavily enriched by the fallout from the feast. This leads to the second phase, the enrichment opportunist stage. The area in and around the skeleton is now a very different environment. The surrounding mud is saturated with organic matter and oils that have leached from the carcass. This nutrient-rich soil becomes a paradise for a different set of organisms. This stage is dominated by thousands upon thousands of small opportunists, primarily polychaete worms and small crustaceans, who colonize the bones and the surrounding sediment. They are not there to eat the large chunks of flesh, but to feast on the leftovers, the small scraps, and the organically enriched mud. The skeleton can become so completely covered in these worms that it appears to be growing a fuzzy, living carpet. This stage can last for several years, as these organisms diligently consume every last accessible morsel of organic material, cleaning the bones and preparing them for the final, longest, and most bizarre stage of the whale fall ecosystem. This is the sulfophilic or sulfur-loving stage. 
This is where the whale fall transforms from a simple food source into a complex chemosynthetic ecosystem, an oasis of life powered not by the sun, but by the chemical energy locked within the whale's bones. Whale bones are a massive reservoir of lipids, or fats, sometimes accounting for up to 60% of their dry weight. Deep within the bones, and in the anoxic sediment below, specialized anaerobic bacteria get to work, breaking down these complex lipids as a byproduct of their metabolic process. These bacteria produce hydrogen sulfide, the same chemical that gives rotten eggs their characteristic smell. This hydrogen sulfide seeps out of the bones and into the surrounding water. For most organisms, hydrogen sulfide is a deadly poison. But for another group of specialized bacteria, the chemosynthetic bacteria, it is the breath of life. These microbes are able to harness the chemical energy in the hydrogen sulfide to create organic matter, in much the same way that plants use the energy of the sun. These chemosynthetic bacteria now form the foundation of a brand new self-sustaining food web. They colonize the surfaces of the bones, forming thick white mats. These mats in turn provide food for a whole new community of grazers, like snails, shrimp, and limpets. This stage can last for 50 to 100 years, and it is home to some of the strangest creatures in the deep sea. Perhaps the most iconic inhabitants of this final stage are the Osidax worms, a genus of bizarre creatures, more commonly and aptly known as zombie worms. When they were first discovered, they baffled scientists. The visible part of the worm is a feathery plume that extends into the water, but the worm itself has no mouth, no gut, and no anus. How was it feeding? The secret lies in a strange, green, root-like structure that the female worm burrows deep into the whalebone. These roots do not eat the bone directly. Instead, they are filled with symbiotic bacteria that the worm harbors. The worm secretes an acid to dissolve the bone, and the symbiotic bacteria then digest the fats and proteins that are released providing the worm with its nutrition. The reproductive strategy of Osedax is equally bizarre. The large, visible worms are all female. The males are microscopic dwarfs that live inside the female's gelatinous tube, their sole purpose in life being to fertilize her eggs. The sulfophilic stage is a bustling alien city, powered by the slow decay of the whale's skeleton. It is a community of sulfide-loving clams, mussels, and a host of other invertebrates that have evolved to thrive in this unique, chemical-rich environment. Many of the species found at whale falls are specialists, found nowhere else but in these temporary deep-sea oases. This has led scientists to a fascinating hypothesis about their evolutionary significance. The deep sea is a vast, fragmented world, with other chemosynthetic ecosystems like hydrothermal vents and cold seeps, often separated by hundreds or thousands of kilometers of barren seafloor. How do the specialized creatures that live in these environments disperse across such vast distances? The stepping stone hypothesis proposes that whale falls may be the answer. The decomposing skeletons of great whales scattered across the ocean floor may act as a crucial network of temporary habitats, allowing these chemosynthetic organisms to hop from one energy source to another, a vital chain of life connecting the disparate oases of the deep. Before the era of industrial whaling, when the great whales were far more numerous, these whale fall stepping stones would have been much closer together, creating a more connected and resilient deep sea ecosystem. The story of the whale fall is a profound and beautiful lesson 
in the resourcefulness and interconnectedness of life. It shows that in the deep sea, where every scrap of energy is precious, nothing is wasted. A single colossal death in the world above can create a vibrant, complex, and long-lasting ecosystem in the world below, an oasis of life that can persist for a century. It is a testament to the powerful and intricate cycles of life and death that shape even the most remote and mysterious corners of our planet.